This program is made possible by the generous partners of Dwayne Miller Ministries. Stay tuned for a message that will strengthen your faith. Get ready for insightful teachings, uplifting testimonies, and practical wisdom that will encourage you to live in victory. Welcome to Today with Dwayne and Cameron Miller. Good morning, Pastor Dwayne here with my beautiful bride, Cameron, and we're so excited to be coming into your home, equipping you with faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. God's people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. But you see, knowledge is not just knowing something. Knowledge does not manifest until it does something. You can know how to build an automobile engine. But if you die without ever building an engine, that knowledge is worthless. So you have to take what you know from the Word and you have to confess it. As I read to you out of Charles Capps' book on God's creative power, faith, words are the most powerful things in creation. You know why? Because God created this universe and others by His Word. You have been made in His likeness, after His image. You create you remove, you restore, you take over whatever comes out of your mouth because that's how powerful words are. So stay tuned. We're going to get into this. I want Cameron to pray. Ask God to help us receive with understanding what he wants to say to us today. Father, thank you again for yet another, another opportunity to come and speak your word. Father, we take our flesh out of it, we take our minds out of it, and we receive only what Holy Spirit feeds through us to present to the people today, Father. We pray that each and every person listening will hear a word from you, Lord, that they will grow, they'll glean from it, and they will have a life-changing experience with you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for that. We thank you for going out into the atmosphere and barring any evil plot that may come against our viewers and those that are tuning in for the first mm -hmm. time, perhaps. Father, we just ask that, there, that you will have divine appointments made for those that are just haphazardly turning and switching through the channels yes. and land on ours, that something will draw them to it and they'll be stuck on that channel and their lives will be changed. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you for all that you died to give us. Yes. We thank you, Father, that we don't have to be without anything that we can walk in health, wealth, and influence. And we give you all the glory for it. And we thank you, Father, for remaining in the shelter of the Most mm -hmm. High where we are off limits to the enemy. And Father, we declare and decree that our state is off limits. Yes. Our nation yes. is off limits. Father, what the enemy has planned is thwarted, whether it be to an individual, yes. a group of people, or a nation. Mm -hmm. We thwart it in the mm -hmm. name of Jesus. And Father, we especially mm -hmm. speak over our ally Israel. Yes. And we say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen that they will always be two steps ahead of the enemy and that the enemy will be just blown away by the fact that they cannot, they can't engage on any plot and scheme that they try to do, Father. That they, they think they have it, that they're all their maneuvers and everything said and it will be thwarted. Mm -hmm. We pray for the safety of the yes. leaders. We pray for wisdom to mm -hmm. be imparted to the leaders of Israel. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. amen. And I can assure you, Prime Minister Netanyahu understands the principle we're talking about. He, takes, he, he teaches a Bible study in the Knesset. He takes the Word and puts a demand on the Word's promise that that is their land. And they are sovereignly, supernaturally protected. You and I have been grafted into the same promise. We are sovereignly and supernaturally off limits to the enemy. But what we confess with our mouth will determine whether we live in blessing or cursing. Charles Cap said in his book, fear will, faith will take you over, but fear will overtake you and destroy you and defeat you. So faith is the substance, something beneath you to stand on while you're hoping for what God's promised. I told you before, and I won't re reiterate the definitions from Hebrew and or from Greek, but hope is a guarantee it's a confidence that what God said must come to pass. You and I must confess that daily, maybe many times throughout the day with our mouth, 
because it's impossible for worry, doubt, and fear and unbelief to penetrate our mind as long as the word's coming out of our mouth. And so that's the power of confession. Mm -hmm. And this word that we talk about, hope, hope is the confidence that hangs on to what God promised. The, uh, Paul, writing in Hebrews, compares hope as an anchor rope to a ship. That when the storms blow, the anchor holds because our faith is rooted in Jesus Christ and all of His promises. And He's not moved by storms. He calms storms. This word hope, Psalm 69, verse 6, let those who wait or hope for you, O Lord of hosts, not be ashamed. Psalm 25, 2 and 3, O my God, I trust or I hope in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits or hopes in you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal treacherously without a cause. Verse 20, my, my soul, keep my soul and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed for I put my trust, my hope in you. Psalm 37, 19, which is one of my life verses. It says, they shall not be ashamed. Another translation says, they shall not hang their heads in disappointment in the evil time. They shall not be ashamed in the evil time. And in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Another translation said, when the cupboards are empty, theirs will be filled. Listen to that. Romans 5, 5, hope maketh not ashamed. Hope does not disappoint, another translation says. Why? Because the love of God has been poured out completely in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. We're living in a time where people are filled with fear and uncertainty concerning the election concerning the economy, concerning the border, and the infiltration of millions of illegal people and criminals, of Israel, concerning what... Listen, if you're filled with the Word, the Word simply tells you when evil days come, you'll not hang your head in disappointment. When, when high prices come, and when inflation comes, and people's cupboards are bare, yours will be filled. That's what the Word of God says. God, I put you in remembrance of your promise that the righteous have never been forsaken, nor has your seed ever had to beg for bread. Mm. I thank you, Lord, that regardless of what happens in this economy, if the stores run out of food, I'm going to have quail in my yard, bread falling out of the sky, and a rock in my yard giving me a drink. You, you, you see, and the more you say that, the more you speak to that, you take his, his booklet on the power, creative power of God for finances, and you speak that. Fear can't live in that, in that place. But now listen. But the opposite's also true. If you're hoping, if you're waiting, standing in what he says, you won't be ashamed. You won't be disappointed. That word ashamed in Hebrew means disappointed. But if you live in fear, you're going to live in constant disappointment. Mm -hmm. If you live in worried out and fear, unbelief, you're going to be in constant disappointment. You took yourself out of the shelter. You exactly. can't take those things into that shelter. Mm -hmm. Did you want to share something? Well, I don't think it fits right okay, now. Okay, that's fine. I just want to ask. It did so, at one more point. So now listen. He says, hope maketh not a shame. I think the New King James says, hope does not disappoint. Why? Because the love of God has been, and literally the word here poured out is literally overflowing. The love of God has overflowed our hearts by the Holy Spirit. I can hope for everything contained in the love of God. Let that sink in. Raising my children, they could be certain, that's hope, hope, they could be certain, they were guaranteed that they were going to have protection, shelter, food, everything they needed mm -hmm. to grow up, be healthy, successful. Why? Because they knew my heart. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have an abusive father, if you have a deadbeat dad, if you have someone who's not a person of covenant, children go to bed hungry, worried, concerned, abused, emotionally distraught, hungry. But you see, hope is rooted in the love of the father. And the question is not do you believe the question is, do you trust Him? Do you trust Him 
when he said, when evil times come, you're not going to hang your head in disappointment. And when people are empty, you're going to be filled. You're going to be the answer to their prayer. The reason I have hope for America is not that I'm hoping something great happens in the election this year. The reason I have hope for America is because God, through His prophets Mm -hmm. and His promises in His Word, has promised. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people call by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin and heal their land. There it is. If that, read it if you want. If yeah, I think now's a good time to interject it. that. We received a word several days ago, and I, I condensed it down to this portion of it. This is God speaking. I see everything, know everything. Justice will be served. If you don't rush and demand and mm. allow me to move, the accounts will be settled. Hallelujah. There you go. We, ha- we have it. So I've, I've shifted this a little bit toward the nation. I'm going to come back to you personally in a minute. But I've been, we had the privilege of being in a meeting this last weekend where Donna Clement, Kim Clement's daughter, was there and she played some of his prophecies. He plainly prophesied in 2009, I think, eight or nine, seven, eight, nine, seven, I mean, a long time before 16. Eight, I think. He prophesied. God would raise up a trump. To be a trumpet. To be a trumpet. And then he prophesied Trump would have two terms. Well, you know what I'm doing? I'm standing on that word. Mm -hmm. You may say, well, I don't know how in the world you could, you know, some people are, how could you vote for him? Or how could, listen, let me tell you something. I'm not marrying the man. I'm not voting for him to be my pastor. I know that I know that I know that when I prophesied, I prophesied in January of 2016, God, the word came out of my mouth and said, America will elect the most pro-Israel president in the history of the nation. And we did. It's not about politics. You got to get that out of your mind. This is not political. This is prophetic. And hear me. If we want to get into the details, the ugly uglies, okay? Do you have grandchildren? I have grandchildren. Would you raise your grandchildren in a state that has just legalized gender affirming drugs and gender affirming surgeries? If your granddaughter wants to become a grandson at 14 years old and made it legal, and if you as a parent say, no, that's not happening in my house until they do what they want to when they're 18, they're not doing it. And the government will take them away from you and give them to the state. Mm. That's what Waltz just signed into law in Minnesota, the vice presidential candidate. That's what Kamala believes. Okay. If you name the name of Jesus and you believe in this book, you cannot vote for that. I know I shouldn't be so strong and political, but I just feel I have to say that right now. That is demonized. That is straight from hell. We have God's word that he will save America in this season. It's been prophesied. I've been a part of the prayer network that Dutch Sheets, Chuck Pierce, Clay Nash, and all of these now for over a decade. Matter of fact, Dutch Sheets has been doing it for 30 years, and so has Chuck Pierce. For decades, We have been prophesying and praying, declaring, decreeing, and repenting for our sin and turning from our wicked ways. There is an ecclesia in this nation that's taking God at his word, and we will see God manifest an awakening in this country. He said, you will not hang your head in disappointment if you stand in hope, if you're confident that what I've promised. But here's the thing. God's people have to get out of fear. They have to get out of flesh. They have to quit listening to the news media. They have to quit listening to the polls. They have to quit listening and know that God did it and he will do it. God has promised. God has said it. And I have to tell you, I know in my knower that this is coming to pass for the glory of God. We also had the privilege of listening to Amanda Grace as she talked about Trump when he was shot. And see, it's been, been, it's been prophesied for years that he was going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And she 
stated in this meeting that she believed that he was in the baptism of fire right now. That when he was shot and he went to the ground, God put him in the baptism of fire to empty him of himself so that he could understand the need for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We are prophesying that, believing that, and standing on that in the name of Jesus. I didn't intend to go here, but the Holy Spirit took me here. Now let's come, let's get back to you. That's national. Let's talk about you for a moment. And if you get anything, just interrupt me. So what are you hoping for? That's nationally. But let's just talk about you. God's promised you the return of a child that's not serving the Lord. She taught me this. Stop calling them a prodigal. Quit labeling things as they may appear literally and start calling them what the Word calls them. Mm -hmm. Start calling that child returned, that child restored. Stop saying, my cancer, it's not yours. Amen. God didn't give it to you. You don't own it. It's trespassing. That's it. And start saying, I'm healed and evicting it out of your life. I don't, look, Charles Caps plainly says, you don't deny the diagnosis. If you're sick, denying your sickness is lying. But you call it what it is, cut off by the blood of Jesus right. and out of your body in the name of Jesus. What are you hoping for? There's a lot of people that can't even answer that question. They're just going along through life, and as long as they don't, as long as they don't run into trouble, they don't care anything about faith. They, they get to live in the house they want to live in and drive the car they want to drive and eat what they want. I, I mean, they don't care. I'm talking about Christians. Mm -hmm. But when you walk through a crisis of belief, right. and you learn that there's more because you have to have it to survive mm -hmm. and to thrive, mm -hmm. then you, you, do, you do start hoping for something. Mm -hmm. what God, I want to know what God promised me. Mm -hmm. Now, look at how hope works. This little illustration, I have to give Charles Capps credit for it, and it's not my idea. So where's my heart? My heart is the seat of my spirit. I'm not talking about this organ that pumps. I'm talking about the seat of my spirit is called in the Bible the heart. It is my knower. My knower knows something's the will of God. I love Pastor Happy because he likes to use that terminology. I knew. I say, how did you know that? He said, I just knew in my knower. He knew in his heart. He knew in the seed of his spirit. Now, we're in the middle of the summer. We got a little bit of a cool spell, but we're in the middle of the summer, and it's brutally hot this time of year. And let's just say you're sitting in your home, and you want to take control of the atmosphere of your home, the physical atmosphere. Well, the physical atmosphere of most homes, not all, but most homes, is controlled by an HVAC unit. The HVAC unit is the heart of your house. And hope is the thermostat. And faith is the energy that sends the signal to the heart of the house to accomplish what you're hoping for. Mm -hmm. It's 100 degrees outside. It's 85 in your house. You're hoping for 72. Your confession is when you set Happy Caldwell, faith begins with a fact, but it ends with an act. You can sit in that house and say, well, I have an HVAC unit, and it's 100 outside, it's 85 in here. Boy, I sure wish it was 72. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we bought that unit, I know we installed it, and I know it works, and man, I'd like for it to be 72 in here, but... Uh, I just, don't, I just don't know what to do. It's not working. Mm -hmm. They put in the equipment, but it's not working. Mm -hmm. mm. Faith is sitting over there waiting for you to do something. Mm -hmm. Your confession is when you tell that thermostat, hope, you know what? My manual here says that if I That's put it. you on 72, mm -hmm. wow. faith is going to tell the heart of my house to bring the temperature, the physical atmosphere to 72. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. God's Word tells you what you can have access to. It's the, it's oh, the owner's it. manual. That's it. And Boy, the owner's good. manual says, by his stripes, I'm already healed. Uh -huh. And the owner's manual says that I have health and influence yeah. and wealth and prosperity. The, the owner's manual says that I will not be disappointed when 
everything's becoming chaotic and the, the, the interest rates are through the roof and you know, inflation's through the roof. He says, I won't be disappointed and my cupboards will overflow. But you got to know what the owner's manual promises so that you can tell the thermostat, the hope of your life, to tell your heart what to believe for. That's it. Just knowing it and reading it is not, not enough. enough. You said that perfectly. So what is your heart's desire? Mm -hmm. The Bible says that if you delight yourself in the Lord, He'll give you the desire of your heart. Mm -hmm. What is your heart's desire? What has God promised you? You have to go to hope and tell it what to believe for and then faith is released through that confession mm -hmm. to your heart. Mm -hmm. Because you see, listen, I got, a, I got a few of these things and then tomorrow I, I promise I'm going to get into taking your land and all that. Listen to this. The only, the, the only thing the heart can produce is what is placed inside it. Your heart is neutral. If you place evil in your heart, it'll produce evil. If you place the word in your heart, it'll produce the result of the word. So your heart's neutral mm -hmm. and it can only produce what's put in it. Okay. And a whole nother subject, but the reason we have a generation of young people that are the way they are is because of how they were raised because their heart was molded to be that way. The heart is true to the demands placed on it. The only thing the heart can do is follow directions given. Listen, the heart cannot create the desired result within itself. Listen to that. The heart cannot create the desired result. Your hope or your mind and your confession tells your heart what direction to go in. You got that? Where a man's heart is, there's treasure will be also. But see, you tell your heart what the treasure is. The heart does exactly what it's told by faith, and faith is told to believe for by hope. Let me say that again. The heart does exactly what it's told by faith, and faith is told what to believe for by hope or unbelief. The heart that says out of its mouth, physical mouth, look at that. Look, I guarantee you that car is fixing to pull out in front of me. Guess what happens? That car pulls out in front of you. Well, you know, I went to the doctor and the diagnosis, there's no hope. See, your heart only regurgitated what your thought processes believe for. Mm -hmm. You believe there's no hope. Mm -hmm. You believe you're going to have a wreck. You have replaced the Word of God with worry, doubt, fear, and unbelief. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. So, here's the thing. How does hope release your faith and direct your heart? How does hope release faith? Hope's rooted in what God's promised. How does hope release faith to get the desired result? It's called communication. Your confession. The seed in the Bible is the Word. The soil, this is Mark chapter 4. That's how the whole kingdom works. The parable of the sower, he said all the other parables hang on this one because this is the greatest parable. Jesus said that. The seed is the Word, the soil is the heart. He lists all different kinds of soil and all different kinds of hearts. Only one of those kinds of heart actually receives the harvest because it received the seed and it sowed the seed by faith, and it got the harvest, 30, 60, and 100 fold. The other types of soil lost the harvest. One just rejected the word, one received it, but then over time grew weary and doubted it, and then one received it, and the cares of life and the thorns and thistles grew up, and they became overwhelmed with their emotions rather than staying in the word. But one heart received it, and spoke it, and sowed it, and received a 30, 60, 100 fold return. What is sowing it? Mark 11, listen to this. Believe those things you sow will come to pass. Believe those things that you what? That you say. I changed the word. 
Why did I change the word? Believe those things that you say you will have. Why did I say believe those things that you sow you will have? Because the sowing is in the saying. That's it. You will have whatever you say. Mm -hmm. And we'll give you the scripture and then we're going to come back tomorrow. We've got two minutes. That's what he's talking about in Romans 4, 17. As it is written, I have made you, Abram, a father of many nations. Listen to that promise. I've made you a father of many nations. In the presence of him whom he, called, he believed, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did, who contrary to hope, in hope to believe, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. God talked to about a 75 year old man, past the, time, past, past the childbearing years. And he said, I'm going to make out of you a great nation. I'm going to give you a promised seed. And out of that seed, the whole world will be blessed. Abraham could have said, but now God, I can't bear any ch children. Abraham could have said, Sarah can't bear any children. Mm -hmm. And what did they do when they got in their flesh? They tried to produce it in their flesh, and they produced a curse. Can I interject this? Yeah, yeah, we got 40 seconds. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> so, finish. Here's, here's, here's the deal. They hold that thought for tomorrow. <laughs> but the Bible says in faith, he called the, that which was not to become a reality. In the natural, it's impossible for me to be the father of many nations, but I call it forth. I am the father. And you know what? When God changed his name to Abraham, 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 you know what his name means in Hebrew? Father of many nations. So every time somebody said, there's Abraham, they said, there's the father of many nations. Mm -hmm, that's it. We're out of time. Listen, it's going to get better tomorrow, I promise. What an exciting time. Come and join us tomorrow, and we'll be talking about faith right here on VTN. God bless you. To contact this ministry, visit our website at www.dwaynemiller.com. You can email us at info at or send your letters to Post Office Box 1331 Cabot, Arkansas 72023. We would love to pray for you. If you need prayer, please call 888-997-2387. Please join us in person at The Edge Church on Sundays at 1030 a.m. We are located at 6702 TP White Drive, Cabot, Arkansas 72023. This program is available to watch on demand. Visit our website, YouTube channel, or the following streaming platforms to catch up on any episodes you may have missed. To stay connected with us, follow us on social media. Find us on Facebook at Dwayne Miller Ministries or on X at Dr. Underscore Dwayne Miller. This program was made possible by the generous partners of Dwayne Miller Ministries. If this broadcast is a blessing to you, please consider partnering with us. You can text GIVE at 501-237-5676 or give online at www.dwaynemiller.com. Thanks for watching Today with Dwayne and Cameron Miller.